Hi, I'm John, the engineer Termel, Guinness record holder for the most election contested, and I just registered in my 70th election in St. Paul's, an Ontario by-election. And I've just filed this application for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada, a court ruling by the Ontario Court of Appeal that says that when the media call it a debate, they don't have to invite all the candidates because that's not what you'd call partisan political broadcasts, said the Ontario Court of Appeal. So this is my complaint, my application to the top, complaining about that order. And it is the basis of all the inequities we see right now in politics around us. Why all you ever see are the same four mediocre parties on TV and never anybody knew. So this is the decision of the federal court where the complaint originated about the uh, CRTC's refusal to do anything about my not being given equitable time in a 2000 election. Everything in here applies now too. So this decision, R versus CBC, causing all the trouble. This application is an appeal against that. And it's also going to cause a stink in the St. Paul's election because Rogers has just announced in their letter <coughs> from... Uh, Goldhawk Live, the Dale Goldhawk will be running it on Monday, September 14th. Goldhawk Live will be taping an all-candidates debate for the St. Paul's riding. It'll take place from 4 to 5 at Rogers Studio. Candidates representing the PC Liberal NDP will be involved in the formal debate. All other candidates will be featured in the last portion of our program and will be given the opportunity to voice their pitch for a duration of approximately one minute. So, candidates interested must confirm, and I said count on me being there. From my blog, Article 3575, Fed Court Ruling, Media May Exclude Candidates to Supreme Court. Uh, I say so you can see my CRTC videos at my uh, King of the Poppers channel, or you can go to my uh, blog and read about them. But this is the decision of the Federal Court of Appeal on my application for relief when they wouldn't let me participate in a debate. So, uh, the order says, this is the Justices Nadon, J.A. Evans, and Peltier, issued on the uh, 22nd of uh, July. Order! Upon notice of motion by the applicant John C. Termel for relief to appeal the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commissions, the CRTC's decision, 2009 slash 184 dated April 8 2009 dismissing his complaint concerning inequitable distribution of the free time political broadcast on Rogers cable political debate in the Brant 2007 provincial general election upon the affidavit of the applicants sworn October 4 2007 upon the applicants written representations upon the CRTC's record in response to the notice of motion and, and I put all this at my message number 3357, upon the applicant's reply to the CRTC's response, and that's at message 3360, the court orders the applicant's motion is dismissed with costs. No reasons. I said it's pretty depressing when you put together a good case, the Crown responds, you beat him up badly, and then the referee awards the win to the guy you just beat up. Why bother? And now, to file an application for leave to appeal as the last stop on the railroading I received? Why bother? Because I get to make my case, force them to respond, and get to beat them up. And then three judges have to sign their names to the decision that gave the victory to the guys who were laughed out of the debate. Justices Mark Nadon, John Maxwell Evans, and Dennis Peltier of the Federal Court of Appeal couldn't find one error to hang their dismissal on. A drubbing of the opposition, they got to crown the victor to puke generations of readers to come. So why bother applying to the Supreme Court if it's so useless? Same reason. So here's my application to the Supreme Court of Canada, filed last week in which I argue, notice of motion, take notice the applicant John Termel applies for leave to appeal 
to the court in form of preparers pursuant to Section 59 for the Supreme Court Act. From the judgment of Justices Mark Nadon, John Maxwell Evans, and Dennis Peltier of the Federal Court of Appeal, 09 A 19, May July 22, 2009, dismissing the application for leave to appeal the broadcasting decision, CRTC 2009 184. I've already read it. So the grounds are that the allocation of free time partisan political broadcast was inequitable despite an Ontario Court of Appeal ruling in R versus CBC 1993 that debates do not have to include all candidates to be equitable. Dated at Brantford, August 20th, John Turmel. To the registrar, to the respondent. Appellant's memorandum. Now, I'm running in the St. Paul election right now, and I just got notice that the format is the big four get to debate, and the other seven little guys get a one-minute tape. Doesn't sound fair, right? I'm going to have to do something about it. This is what I'm going to argue. So, same thing happened in 2007. So, statement of facts. Applicant was an independent candidate in the 2003 Ontario... General Election Brant Riding, having participated in a quarter century's worth of debates by that time, applicant was the only candidate who used visual aids, such as newspaper clippings, complimentary currencies, such as Toronto dollars, Guelph green dollars, maritime hours, computer diskette, rubber ruler, etc. Like most candidates, applicant wears abolitionist party button, which is the lapel sticker that says, let's, for the local employment trading software, a current green currency, Applicant has a royal flush on the tie, wears a white hard hat, and says the engineer, to open and close presentations. To Rogers debate moderator Tim Philp didn't like the applicant using visual aids when the other candidates did not, and so, in the 2004 federal general election, he unilaterally banned visual aids and party or personal identification. Of course, other than party buttons, this ban on visual aids did not affect the presentation of the others, only the applicant. <clears throat> On July 21st, Abbott complained to the CRTC about Rogers interfering with candidates' presentations. On August 11th, a letter from the CRTC informed Rogers of the complaint, but did nothing more. Two more letters to the CRTC got no response. At the 2007 Ontario General Election debate in Brant Riding, rebroadcast on September 29, October 6, and October 8, applicant displayed the party button and was cut off by moderator Tim Philp, who insisted it be put down. Applicant put it on the lapel. Moderator would not allow the continuation of the candidate's opening statement unless it was taken off, so candidate obeyed and removed it. Then Tim Philp ordered the Brantford police to remove the candidate from the debate anyway. On September 24th, I complained to the CRTC, demanding they guarantee all candidates equitable time, quantitatively and qualitatively. On September 25th, the CRTC gave Rogers three weeks after the election date to answer. On September 27, two days later, Rogers refu refused applicant an equitable share of the time, saying the ejection was not for wearing the party button, but for interrupting the next speaker who'd been told to speak after I'd been cut off. The three extra rebroadcasts of the inequitable debate took place, <clears throat> trying to obtain relief before it was too late and the election was over. Applicants sought an order of mandamus compelling correction before it was too late within an application for judicial review. 13. The federal court ruled it could not help until the CRTC issued a decision, even if too late to do anything about it. So applicant then requested a decision of the CRTC a respondent on the complaint, and on April 8th, the CRTC dismissed applicant's complaint. Applicant filed an application for leave to appeal to the CTRTC decision to the Federal Court of Appeal, which was dismissed by Justices Mark Nadal, John Maxwell Evans, and Dennis Peltier without reasons on July 22nd, 2009. Points of objection. The issues raised are, one, whether the licensee controls display of candidates' promotional materials, two, whether a candidate can be punished for the loss of time after the moderator's command has been obeyed, Three, whether the commission is derelict in its duty to regulate and supervise airtime distribution beforehand. Four, whether the Ontario Court of Appeal decision in R versus CBC that debates are not programs of partisan political character is contradictory. Five, whether omitting the all for the commission's policy statements from the statutes, all rival parties and candidates, is derelict. 
Six, whether the Ontario Court of Appeals contradictory ruling should be accepted as final. Or seven, whether accepting the court ruling which corrupts the democratic process by allowing the exclusion of candidates from debates when they can issue new regulations that work is a dereliction of the duty to regulate and supervise that elections be democratic. 